Bobby Kevin here, and I'm sitting with uh, Mike Ferguson. Mike, can you just tell us about uh, the vibe in, uh, in the weigh-ins today? Um, I thought it was pretty impressive. I've been to every fight Rich has had. I've been to every weigh-in, and this was by far the most upbeat, most tempo, most tension, especially in the, in the middleweight. And this, and this is Silva uh, Belfort? Right, yeah, exactly. Uh, the, the tension there was, you could cut it with a knife. But you know, there was no tension between um, Rich Franklin and Forrest Griffin. Rich Franklin is a good guy. Forrest Griffin's a good guy. And neither one of them are going to bad mouth. Neither one of them are going to say anything derogatory about each other. They're just good guys. So Belford and Silva, they're bad guys? No, 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 no. They're not bad guys. I just think that uh, the tension and, and the friction, you know, one guy says one thing and the other guy takes it wrong. And, and I, I can understand it. And it, it's good for the fight game. It hypes it up. But... Uh, those two are fantastic fighters. They both re beat Rich Franklin, and uh, we'll see what happens. Who do you think is going to win between Anderson and Sylvain Belfort? Um, who do I think or who do I want? Who do you want? I'd like to see Anderson win. Why? I like Anderson. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him. I think pound for pound he's one of the best fighters in the world. Uh, Vitor, um, he's a great fighter. But uh, he's just coming back, and I just don't know if he's got enough to take Anderson. Do you think uh, Belfort would have taken Silva five, five years ago, seven, eight? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I think times are different now, and I think Anderson is, is he, he's just super good at what he does, and he, he keeps people off guard, and when, he, he, when he's got the time to figure it out, you're done. Tell me about your training with uh, Rich Franklin. I've been with Rich for eight years now. Uh, as, as far as physical conditioning, discipline, dedication, heart, I've never met anybody like Rich. Um, the closest guy that comes to him is trainer partner George Grigel. And uh, I mean, I've had professional athletes in baseball, football, basketball, hockey, pro bodybuilding. And Rich is the most disciplined, dedicated, unbelievable condition machine I've ever seen. Can you tell us a little bit? Uh after the fight with Chuck Liddell when he broke his arm, about the rehab and now the past uh, four or five months you've been training? Sure. Um, there, was, there was a major problem with the break because it was so close to the wrist they weren't sure if they were going to have to pin it. So there was weeks and months of uncertainty whether you know they'd have to pin it and put pins in it. And, but it, it healed real well. We got him back in the gym doing lower body and, and, and you know cardio on that right away. But with the hand, we you know the, the arm three maybe three and a half months of no serious conditioning, lifting, hitting, striking. And uh, so uh, we were playing catch up. But as I say, Rich is an unbelievable athlete. And uh, so he's in a great shape. We changed his fight training around. Rich came up with a few ideas and we incorporate things. And I think condition wise, cardio, endurance wise, he's in the best shape he's ever been in. And then which way did you change his training camp? Uh, we came to, to where we give him less rest. We give him less area to work with. We fixed up a, a training session where it's in the size of a cage. And you go from, there's no rest period. Uh, we went for 17 minutes and his heart rate was 193. 193. And after a 60 second rest, he was down to 138. That's that's impressive. So a lot of explosive training. A lot of it, everything's explosive. Everything's explosive. Everything's power. Uh, it was it was different than what we do where we did the circuit. We did everything was explosive and, and, and powerful and no rest, no rest whatsoever. And uh, he, uh, it's it's amazing what he that what that can do. How do you want Rich to end the fight on Saturday? I'd like to see him uh, end it. In the second round, either submission or knockout. Uh, I don't want to, see, you know, the less time in the cage, the better, as far as I'm concerned. The, the, the less That's punishment, the less damage you have to take, the better. You know, it, it, it's he's 36 now, so it's uh, the body can only take so much. But it is, as far as conditioning, he'll he'll be able to go 10 five-minute rounds if they have to. But I, I want to see him get in there and get out with his less. Done, punishment and damage as he can. How far do you think uh, Rich Franklin is going to go with fighting? Do you think he, he's, he, do you think he's going to retire in the next two years? Um, well, number one, I don't think he retired Chuck Liddell. I think you know he was just the last straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, Rich doesn't like to be known as the guy who, who uh, 
retired Chuck Liddell. I would like to see Rich out within the next year. Next year? Yeah, I would like to see it. Uh, as far as Rich, um, I know we, he, he wants to get another shot at the belt and see what happens and then go from there. But um, we haven't discussed it, but personally, a year and I can see him get out. You're a great coach, and I asked Nick Diaz about training camp, and, he, and Nick Diaz, he was like, there's no training camp, there's no tents, and the whole term, the media is, 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 is putting out there, it doesn't exist. What do you call it? Um, I say there's no off-season. You train all the time, but there's a training camp. We take eight to ten weeks of a training camp for Rich, which we do his fight training, like we you know, he talked about in, in the area of a cage. We condition all year round, but it's different. We do strength conditioning, we do endurance conditioning, uh, we do powerful explosive conditioning. We, you know, we did heavy weights this time, which is a lot different. We do a lot of heavy weight. I mean, you know, squatting heavy, deadlifting heavy, benching heavy. But the, to me, there's no off season. But there's a there's a fight training. We take eight to ten weeks, and there's a fight training. There's a fight camp. Do you have another fighter that is uh, upcoming, and you want to give a heads up to the viewers? Uh, there's two of them. George Gurgel is fighting March 5th in uh, Columbus, Ohio for Strike Force, and Zoya Lafrostos, who won the uh, 155 or 115 pound belt in Bellator, is fighting March 5th in uh, California. Win. Uh, okay. Mike, can you just explain a little bit about, or tell us about the training with the Marines? Um, I went to the Marine Corps when I was 17, uh, did uh, boot camp, uh, infantry training, jungle warfare and I went to Vietnam for 26 months and um, I wouldn't change a thing. I loved the I loved the Marine Corps and I would have stayed a lifer if I would have got more rank. I was only a sergeant and if I would have been a staff sergeant gunny I would have stayed and made a life career out of it. I loved the Corps. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time.